Welcome again to Following Historic Trails. Well, our guest today is someone who I'm sure has changed the life of many people in southern Alberta, and I know that he changed my life, although he doesn't probably know it. Uh, it's Mr. Frank Hozak, who was uh, Mr. Band Man in Lethbridge for uh, 40 years, I guess, or That's at least right. 40 uh, years ago, about since you started your first band in Lethbridge. That is 40 years. And uh, I guess you've been retired now, Frank, for how many years? Uh, for 10 years. 10 oh, years. You haven't? No, like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody I'm sure remembers Frank Hozak from the, from the days when the band used to march from the Red Cross rooms down 7th Avenue, put on a little uh, uh, program in Henderson Lake, That's didn't right. you? Um, every Sunday afternoon for a long, long time. And uh, I remember I did it for many years. Uh, we've been looking over some pictures uh, earlier in the day, and uh, I realized that I don't know most of the young fellows. I'm from the old guard. And uh, we might as well maybe have a look at these now. And uh, then we're going to start looking at some of the other events that have uh, been part of Frank Hozak's uh, career. Now, if the camera uh, can get close to this. This is uh, the Lethbridge Band, and we think about 1946. Would that about be right? That. Now, I'm not quite sure where this picture was taken. Um, Neither I. <laughs> uh, it looks sort of like Third Avenue, but I'd be guessing, so I don't know. It's uh, the Lethbridge Parade, I expect, and uh, it's gone the same route for many, many years, so it was probably 13th Street North down 3rd Avenue and, and, and so on as it does today. Uh, there are a few people that uh, we should maybe point out. Here's Frank uh, strutting as he did, very fine gentleman, he made us all look to shame uh, as we kind of hobbled along behind. And there's people here in the first row, uh, Rex Little is here I know, and I think Eldine McHugh, um, uh, Don Hansen, a tuba player back there, um, the Horlackers, they were all part of the band in the 46, 47, 48 era. So this is the first picture you the have, the picture. oldest picture you have of the band. Now, isn't that awful? Here I am, right back at this. Uh, Mark Dorham said a few minutes ago, when I've told my stories of the Mounties coming west, I never told him that I was with the original Mounties. I'm beginning to feel that old. Now, the next picture. This was taken at the LDS Church. I, the, yes, yes. Uh, I know because I'm in this one too. And this group below, and I'm not sure if those pictures were taken. No, they weren't. They weren't taken. This picture is a, as a whatever the composite of two Hozak Enterprises, the Band of the Father and the Orchestra of Young Frank. That's right? right. My son Frank. Uh, that's right. And there's a, a number of people that uh, are, you know, saying, I think Rex is in this second one too. There's uh, uh, Joe Kenwood. Here's, here's uh, young Frank here. Yeah. The boy. And um, this was at a concert that we played at the uh, LDS church. LDS church. And uh, the, you may see the ACT banner at the back. That was, the original picture was sponsored by the city of Lethbridge. Is that right? The first band? Those first band was in the Associated Travelers. That's right. Okay. Second after was City Band. Oh, I see. Then Kiwani's Band. Mm -hmm. you know. and, then, the, and then from there, where did it go? There is a sign yet on the top, Associated Canadian Travelers. Right That's there. what it is, yeah. Yeah, I should <laughs> that remember was that. very bad. In fact, the sign even gets uh, fancier. They put a little bit more money into it. We had a lovely banner here. And there's a date on this one, 1946. That was a uh, Lethbridge band. Yeah, Lethbridge band. But that was ACT again. Yeah, yeah. And again, let me just point out, I don't know if you can still see this here. Um, here's Eldine McHugh, uh, Mo Martin, yeah. myself, Leroy Mills. Rex Little. Rex Little. <laughs> uh, Ken Thomas uh, McCorkle. Yeah. Um, this is another McHugh. Uh, Don Hansen. 
Um, here's Morris Cohen down here. Uh, Howard Ellison. Uh, Ken Dobbs. Uh, this is Dr. Russell now who lives in um, Cardston, I believe. Uh, this is one of the Horlackers. Uh, and he's a Borland. Yeah, he right. was coming now back from the California. Oh, is that right? John Borland. Uh, Ken Meller, uh, Bill Green, uh, Archer. Hey, I remember most of these people. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and of course, some of them came back to the LCI reunion last summer. And I think you were out at the reunion for part of the morning, oh, yeah. too, weren't mm -hmm. you? So time moved on, and you don't have to worry about us talking about this very much more because <laughs> we got to the point where I don't know any of these people anymore. But uh, let's just have a glance at uh, some of these pictures here. That was the Kivani's band after this one. And this one here. Now this is at Galt Gardens, of course. Can you, oh, give, yes. can you give me a year on this one at all? Do you know when it was that this was taken? Oh, I would say 20 years ago or longer than that. Yeah. It was 20 years ago. The Jordan Photo Studio on the back here. Maybe we should make them tell us when it was. And uh, here's a picture. I actually have a hard time trying to figure out where this was yeah, taken. Yeah, that was uh, close to, together, those two bands. Got a few um, things on the back here. It's uh, First of all, it was taken at the Red Cross Center, where we pa practiced for many, many years, didn't we? And it says 1955, question mark. So there we go. And uh, Mr. McKim, a well-known Lethbridge resident, who was, he was the man, what was his position? The president it, of the band committee? No, he, the McKim was a policeman on a CPR, for CPR. I see. And what did he have to do with the band? He was just the head of he the committee. He was a secretary oh, and, and president. He was everything, practically. Oh, I see. He had a great interest in it, didn't he? And then it says, well, two different conflicting years. We won't worry about it. Now here's one taken, this is an old type photo, but it's not that old, uh, taken in the coolies, is it? That's right. <laughs> With a lot of uh, shadows from leaves, which makes it a little hard to identify people. But I'm sure some of the listeners are probably there and maybe they can tell us who they are because we're looking at a group now that I'm afraid I, I don't know. But Frank told me, this is Milk River. Milk River Band. Now, how did you end up in Milk River when you're in See, Lethbridge? Milk River Band, we start with my son, too. We started. But after when he moved to Kamloops, I was just taking that band myself over. That was a very nice band that time. Really faithful players. Mm -hmm. More faithful than the city people, eh? You find the <laughs> well, it's a little bit different. <laughs> the small town, easier to have a band in or, or harder? Yes, yeah, smaller band, you know, like for instance, Foothills band, Cowley, Lombric. Mm -hmm. They were always, everyone right on the top, you know, never miss. That was mm. something, mm. you know, but leverage is a difference, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what I think you're saying is it's a little harder to organize a band in a city. Is that what you're yeah. saying? <laughs> Maybe kids had too much to do here. Yeah, yeah. Now here's a small group. That was a special group. Now I see one of the, the Goffner boy, and I can't think of what his first name is, but we're, we're into the 60s now with this particular group, I'm pretty yeah, sure. That was still Kivani's, that's right. Yeah. Now you mentioned that this, ah, October 28th, 1965, somebody stamped, us, stamped it for us. Now this was a small group uh, who were s some of your select players. Is that right? That when they need just small group to play, you know, for certain occasion, not any parade, just... Oh, I see. That was a great idea. You never had that uh, in our day. Mind you, we weren't that big a band anyway, I guess. Now we have a fancy bus. Um, I don't know what that written on the back means. But anyway, did, have you any idea about this picture here, other than the fact that you had a, a great bus and it was sponsored here by CJOC? Where were uh, you going? <laughs> They were taking us to Van Gogh World. There was some kind of celebration down there. Or oh, that was a parade, too, in, in Van Gogh World. They took us down there. And there was a good group. And kids had lots of fun at that time, you know, going out. Because every band, you have to take them somewhere playing that they enjoy the playing. Otherwise, they will be bored just practice, practice, and not going nowhere. 
That's, we, right. that's why we took him down to the Vancouver. <laughs> now, in my day, it used to take us to the Calgary Stampede. Oh, Calgary Stampede. Every, every year we play in Calgary Stampede. How many years altogether did you play in Calgary, do you think? In Calgary, second year when we started the band, we went to Calgary, and we won the first prize, Eaton's Trophy. Mm -hmm. Second year, we won the Egan Trophy. But third year, the Cranbrook Girls Band take that tr trophy over. Mm -hmm. But after that, we still were going there, there, you know, every year. And it was not only Calgary Stampede, we to Creston, to mm -hmm. Haver, Montana. Mm -hmm. And there was the, always, they were just waiting for that, just going out. That's you know? right. I can remember going to the, um, to Coot Sweetgrass, uh, must have been 48, 47. We, there was some sort of a ceremony on the border at Coots. Do you remember that? Oh, yes, oh, yes. What was the event? Have you any idea? We were playing across the border, like for football. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing that there was a fly past of jet planes, and it seems to me that was the first time I had seen jet planes. Uh, and of course, that was part of the ceremony. Another trip I remember was a train trip, and of course, in those days, you went by train. Didn't you, many, on many of these trips? Yeah, when we were driving so, one time, that was for two, for two years, was on the train that was old coach with the immigrants were coming from the Europe. That must have been the one I was on. There was sleeping <laughs> beds in, in that coach. And one time, one girl was sleeping on the top and she fell right down. Is that right? <laughs> Well, the no. trip that I was on, uh, that I remember, was uh, one up to Crow's Nest Pass, and we played in the old arena in, would it be the Coleman Arena that we played in? I remember playing Tiger Rag. Remember Tiger, Tiger yeah, Rag? Yeah, 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 <laughs> that's right, that's right, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, of course, we talked about the uh, double-decker outhouse. That's the first time I ever heard about the double-decker outhouse at uh, Cowley or Lundbrack or somewhere yeah. uh, along the way. Um, now, what was the greatest trip that you remember? I, I remember the ones I went to were the greatest for me, but you went to some fancier places than we got to. What was the one that really sticks out in your really mind? Really, the greatest trip was the Vancouver. Mm. See, what they really enjoy. And then Haver, Montana. That's what they really like it. What was on at Haver? Was it a band festival? Ba band festival. Yeah. There was some um, band festival like used to have here, the Legion. Mm -hmm. They put on those festivals. Then we went again to Haver. Mm -hmm. And Legion put that on for about three or four years. And then they quit again. <laughs> and what about Vancouver? What was the event out there that you were going to? In Vancouver, there was a San, San Camino Really, there was a bigger, big, bigger parade, you, you know, not just ordinary parade. And was a sponsor, you know, for that. The um, trip to Expo, you never went to any Expos? Never went to Expo 67? I don't know if that time was Expo in Vancouver, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. But to, um, you know, I can remember, and I mentioned at the beginning of the program how you changed my life. I mean, that sounds like one of these great programs, you see. But there was a lot of young people, and I, I think of Rex Little, who often mentions you. Uh, I'm sure you've had a tremendous influence on him, the fact that he still plays trombone. Uh, very, uh, I think one of his great enjoyments in life is, is the music that he got from you. And I can remember uh, right after the war, it was one of these things, uh, are you going to go into minor hockey? or are you going to go into the band? And you must have run across this a lot, where kids had to make a choice of playing hockey or taking their music. Oh, and yeah. I remember I chose the music. And uh, you know some of the really memorable things of my youth uh, tied in with, uh, with the music that I had with you. And I, I want to thank you for that, because I had a lot of, when I went to university, I played in an orchestra there, a dance band, and uh, I wasn't particularly good. But I, I really enjoyed it, and of course, this all goes back to you. 
And of course, many years you pra you had lessons at uh, Hamilton Junior High, didn't you? That's where you you really had your your uh, studio or whatever you would call it. There was a private teaching. A private teaching. That's and right. The kids were paying two dollars a month, <laughs> and he, they had a three practices: private lesson, and Friday practice, Sunday practice, Sunday marching mostly. Uh -huh. You know, around. 7th Avenue there, and that was a really cheap, very cheap <laughs> for That's two right. dollars. I had three practices. That's right. Now that was handy for you because you lived right across from the school, didn't you? That's right. And you just had to, to get out of the house and march across. When did, when did you start? 4.30 in the afternoon or after supper with those lessons? Always after the school finished. So would some yeah. maybe five o'clock uh, you'd have some lessons? That's yeah, about five o'clock. Some they were taking lessons between noon hours. Uh -huh. They were coming right across to, to my house. Oh, I see. Well, and did, when did you eat your supper then? When did you get your supper? If you're practicing at five o'clock, did you have oh, supper at uh, four o'clock? <laughs> yeah, I had a little bit supper even though before I went to school. Now a lot of our listeners are going to remember your little baton. Banging it against the bell, <laughs> banging it against the bell of that. Oh, right? there was a lots, lots of banging on, on, on the chair. <laughs> that yeah. was great fun. <laughs> you know, and there's something I want to uh, when we're talking while we're talking about instruments. Uh, I want to get in before I forget. I can remember going across, getting on the streetcar. You originally lived on the north side, didn't you? Uh, and uh, when I first went over there to get an instrument, I got on the streetcar and uh, took the streetcar over to North Lethbridge, got off there, and I wanted to play an instrument. And I had never seen one of these instruments before. And uh, I think you gave me one of these mellophones that went around your neck. R and uh, we'll talk about those in a minute. But uh, I couldn't get any sound out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my parents were very happy for a number of, <laughs> a number of days. But uh, you, you put the little piece of paper on your bottom lip yep. and show us how to, could you tr maybe show us how you do, yep. uh, try That's to get right. that sound. Couldn't do it. So finally you gave up on that and you gave me a, a baritone that went around my neck as well because they were supposedly easier to, to get a sound out of, I guess. And so that's what I got on my second instrument. And some kids, they can pick up the instrument and get, get a sound right away, can't they? Oh, and, yes. And others mm. uh, take oh, there Many takes a few days before they start to produce in, in tone. Some they can play the uh, right. And uh, those old instruments were bad from war prisoner camp. Yeah. All those big instruments was going around the neck, neck. Only the small cornet was in the left hand. And in Germany, they were playing on motorcycles. And I was horn. That's why they took okay, the round round the neck. That's right. <laughs> there yeah. was a no clarinet or a saxophone. <laughs> I hope that the the city of Lethbridge, uh, somewhere or other, will will get a hold of those instruments and have at least one in their museum because they were really classical instruments, weren't they? I mean, unusual, and they were made, as you said, I believe that so that the German soldiers could ride their motorcycles. And play the instrument at play the same time. Play the instrument. Yeah. They call it, there was a Panzer division headed had that band. Mm -hmm. There were maybe more, more band. But those instruments were coming down with the prisoners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were playing their band in that prisoner camp. Mm -hmm. And associate travelers, they bought all the junk. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was calling. <laughs> so but then after that, Canadian associate travelers started buying more and more instruments, you know, mm -hmm. then Kivanis and until we a good, mm -hmm. good set of instruments. The, uh, w those instruments then that they got from the prisoner of war camp weren't in very good shape when they got them? Were they good instruments or were they junk? They were the junk. Okay. They were playing on the cheapest instrument world was on the market. We never buy anything because they never had any money. Yeah. You know, yeah. Kivanis was just selling those apples. That's you know right. how much they can make it, you're only selling those apples. Uh -huh. And that's, that's how you play. Well, you must have encouraged people whenever they could, after they got interested, to buy their own instrument, I guess, eh? So few bodies, may, maybe cornet or yeah. something like that, but nobody wanted to buy alto horn or baritone or a bass. 
-hmm. because what they will do with that. That's right, yeah. yeah. That's it. Did, um, do you see a lot of the old students from time to time? Do they come back to see you? The people you've had in the past and have moved away, do they ever come back and talk to you at all? Oh, every time when I come someplace, there's somebody coming, you know, <laughs> shake hand. Do you remember me, Mr. Hosnick? No, no. <laughs> they remember me, but I don't remember them. That's too bad. <laughs> well, it's hard to remember how many thousands of people uh, that, and you must have had thousands of people that passed through. I have a full box of the application. The box is about so high. All those names are there, signatures, right from very beginning to very end. Is that, well, you should save those. Don't throw those away. Keep those. <laughs> I, I still keep it. Sure. So, I, but I don't know to who. I, I give it. Give them to the museum. I'm sure that they would appreciate it. Oh, I don't think it's... Well, then give, give them to me either. then, but <laughs> I'll look after them. <laughs> but, that, but, you know, that's something that uh, there'd be a lot of interesting yeah. names that... Uh, these are, this is everybody that applied and was in the band since it, very, since it began. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody want to fill an application, mm -hmm. put a signature on, and that was what instrument he play and so on. In case you want that box with those, you know, you can have it. Well, I, <laughs> I think I'd better get it before something <laughs> happens to it. Because, you know, th those are part of our heritage. And as I said, yeah. a lot of people... Um, in southern Alberta, and particularly Lethbridge, appreciate uh, the musical training uh, that you gave us. Um, you know, we, we didn't uh, pass all the fancy exams, and we didn't uh, uh, end up being teachers, but we got a lot of enjoyment out of the day-to-day the -day activities that went on. Now, uh, there's some other things that I want to talk about, and that is your army days. You uh, mentioned that uh, you were in how many different armies? I was first in Austrian army, me, then Czechoslovakian army, and the last Canadian army. And Canadian army was the best. <laughs> in what way was it the best? How was it the best? Better food, uh, or what way? Everything was the best. Everything, treatment, food, just. In the army, men was like on a big holiday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but tough in Austrian army. <laughs> how, did you, uh, how did you get into the music field? Were you from a musical family? No, I was taking private lessons when I was a kid. See? Mm -hmm. Then playing, you know, with the bands and so on. That's how I started. Mm -hmm. When I was uh, 10 years old. Start first. Hmm. Then, did your family, did your father and mother, were they musical no, at all? No, they were not, nobody musician. <laughs> Is that right? No. Now you, you say you, you played professionally in uh, Czechoslovakia before oh, yes. you came here? Oh, yes. What kind of bands did you play in there? See, in the, that was uh, Czechoslovakia, they were so called band, you know, mm -hmm. those nice so called uniform. And there, those musicians, if somebody hired you again, different band to play, see, there was where those bands were not exactly sticking to one band. You can play that band and that band, you know, switching, switching ground. Mm -hmm. Because most of those bands were working, then they hire from other band. You know, mm -hmm. everyone, have, you know, there was every village had a band there. It's not, nothing like here, big city like Leverage, and no bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a difference. And the how did you you were drafted into the army? Oh yes, is that right? Oh yeah, in the Austrian army. Were yeah. you? Did you play in the band there? The in the Austrian, when you was in reserve, you play. Then in case come sometime you were to such a barrier, and even fighting mm -hmm. and so on. But in our say, army, it was only those regular play after, you know, who was crippled, you know, from, mm -hmm. from, the, from the wall and so on. Mm -hmm. the, um, you came to Canada in 1927. Correct, yeah. And you came to the Crow's Nest Pass and you played in a band there, or you were the band master. How, how did it work there? First, 
That was a West Canadian Colliers band. I was teaching there, kids for the band. And when Mr. Goodwin, that time, he was a band leader. He was moved to, to Calgary, you know, he mm -hmm. quit the band. Then I took over and take again band to Calgary Stampede. See? And those days first, when we went to Calgary Stampede, the miners with the black faces, <laughs> <laughs> the lambs on the top, big chunk of coal oh, on, yeah. on, on the truck. Oh, yeah. That's, and we had the big, biggest applause there in Calgary than any other band. <laughs> we played beer, beer bottle polka on whole route, <laughs> and we had the most applause at the time. Uh, this, um, did you, you came to Lethbridge in order to take over the band here, or were you, had you already moved here and they asked, and it came later? See, when I was coming to Lethbridge, my son Frank, he was coming down here first. Mm -hmm. You know what, he didn't have so much experience on those brass instruments and those brass horn. Mm. Then he said, Father, come down here, we will take, start both, both together. And then we started both together. I was teaching brass, Frank was teaching reed instrument. Mm -hmm. That's why in six months, we had a band. Oh, we put see. on a concert in six months. Second year, we went to Calgary Stampede mm -hmm. and win those prizes. That was very fast teaching. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> when you, uh, yeah. Two of you to do it, eh? Well, we've pretty well run out of time, Frank, but um, Again, I want to thank you for coming and, and sharing all this with us. Uh, you're an institution uh, as far as Lethbridge is concerned, and uh, we want to let you know that we appreciate all you've done over the years, and we hope you continue on to continue to keep smiling and be a part of the community. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Well, that's our show, and we'll see you next week. And remember to follow some historic trails.